I'd like to be remembered for like small interactions rather than like putting out like the most prolific album. This is Lauren Engel. Today I'm here with Golden Vessel. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> really good. <laughs> so originally born in Brisbane. Uh, yeah, and I live in Brisbane still. Yeah. yeah. Are your parents originally from Brisbane as well? Yeah. Oh, actually, no. Mom's from Melbourne and Dad's from like the Sunshine Coast, but they've oh. been living in Brisbane like my whole life. What did they move to Brisbane for? Um, I think just for Dad to get that like Dad just got a job and moved yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Not that exciting. <laughs> what did they do? Um, Dad's an accountant, mm -hmm. and Mum was like a primary school teacher, but now she's just like a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of your creative side from then? Uh, I think my mom, like my my dad's not super creative. But, <laughs> he's an accountant. But, uh, yeah, but he's like, <laughs> I guess like maths is kind of creative. Yeah. But yeah, Mum like you know like did lots of art and played piano and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up? Nothing that cool. Like a lot of U2 mm -hmm. and yeah, I can't really actually like they're, they're, like we weren't listening to the Beatles or anything like it was just like <laughs> kind of like, I don't know. But so, were they playing a lot of music or not so much music? Um, not heaps, eh? just like a little bit, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a super musical house, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. But they like, they got me to do piano when I was um, like four, or, like really young, yeah, right? Yeah, super young, yeah. Did you like it back then? No, it was okay. And then I like... I think when I turned 10 or 11, I got like a really good teacher who would kind of just be like, oh, what's the song you like right now? And I'd just tell him a song and he'd be like, um, all right, let's figure it out. And so like, because I was never very good at sight reading, I like, oh, just yeah, kind of like play by ear. So yeah. he like, he would get me to still sight read, but he'd, he'd like do a lot of like, let's just figure it out or like make something or, and that was really cool. I you remember that, what kind of the songs you were asking him? Yeah, like nothing cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, he'd like, the fray <laughs> or like um don't stop me now by queen like super oh. super like not cool stuff but like at the time when i was like i don't know like 10 or 11 i was like pretty happy with that <laughs> were you in some like school bands or anything or um oh uh, yeah in high school i was in like a orchestra because i played trumpet as well oh wow. for a little bit but i was awful and then i like I, yeah i did like form a band with my friends um when i was 14 and we played like one show and then <laughs> it, it ended, yeah. But what kind of music was it? Um, it was like synth pop. We were like really into Miami Horror, which is like a Australian band, and Mike Snow, mm. and um, who else were we into? Like Phoenix and the Wombats. Yeah, we were awful. It was so bad, but <laughs> yeah, it was fun as well. So it only lasted like a few months or? And yeah, we like ended over. the whole time we were just arguing over what name we were going to go by. <laughs> oh we played God. one show and then we like never rehearsed again. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. that point, were you already exploring like making original music by yourself? No, not really. I was like having a crack at like playing stuff on the piano, like new stuff, like making stuff. But I think what happened was I like got really excited about this band and bought a synth. And spent all my money because I was like 14. I didn't have that much money, <laughs> and I, like I had no money left, and I had a synth, and then the band kind of ended, and I was like, oh, I was enjoying it, but like now I ha like I bought the synth, I should probably use it. Yeah. So I just started like recording at home on GarageBand, and um, kind of just got into it from yeah. that. So it was actually kind of a, maybe a good thing that the band. Yeah. Ended. Do you yeah. think if it wasn't for that synth, you wouldn't like have that like pu like push yourself to even start music? Yeah, probably not. That's crazy. If yeah. <laughs> that's it, maybe we wouldn't be like... Yeah, yeah, thing. we wouldn't be talking right now. If not for that Polgar 3 that I bought when I was 14. Yeah. Did your parents like your music? Um, they, were they listening to the early stuff you were making on yeah, the scene? Yeah, they were. I think they were like... Oh, they were, they've always been like kind of proud, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think they like the stuff now especially, but... Mm. Um, yeah, you know, like I feel like if you're a parent and your kid's like 15 and trying to make music it's not going to be that good and you kind of have to be like nice about it but <laughs> yeah I think they were, they were like yeah. happy that I was having a go the whole time. How do you describe her personality back then growing up? I think it was pretty energetic mm. and like um uh 
Were you into sports and stuff then, or? Oh, uh, not really. Like I was, I, I've always, I've always run, like mm -hmm. running, but yeah, I don't know. I think I just, yeah, I didn't really like high school that much. It was okay, but the second I got out of high school, I felt a lot more confident and mm -hmm. um, felt like I kind of became like a real human being and not like I know school just does like weird stuff to kids. Really? What would you think about like finishing school that gave you confidence? Um, I think it's just like schools like like it's good in certain ways but it just puts you in like a small space with not that many people for a long time oh. and it's kind of nice just to branch out and meet people that are like-minded and um, have freedom to do stuff mm -hmm. yeah and what age did you come up with Golden Vessel? Um, I think 15. Oh, around the same time. Yeah. And so I've then, been doing it for like seven years. But it's like a random... You said in a previous interview you just wanted a name that you wouldn't regret like, in yeah. the future. Yeah, well I definitely came up with some bad ones and then I was like... I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, I feel like in five years I'm really going to feel embarrassed by this name. I feel like Golden Vessel sounds super mature for like a 15 year old. I don't know why, just something about it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I, I... If I could choose a new name now, I would, but I'm not... Oh, really? Yeah, but I'm not I'm not mad at the fact that um, I have like a project called Golden Vessel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay, I can live with it. <laughs> yeah. And did you have other people around you, like other, other than your band, like trying to be a producer? Um, not really till I left school. And then I, yeah, I guess that's when I met like some like-minded people and... How did you meet them? Kind of like a lot, a lot of it was like mutual friends, like, mm. or like the internet as well. Um... I met my my best friend Connor, who makes music as accurate just via SoundCloud like four years ago, mm -hmm. and now we hang out like every day. <laughs> so yeah, I don't like yeah, I guess social media and stuff like that. I don't know if I read in a previous interview, but were you studying marketing or something? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've got a marketing degree. Oh, um, so you went from high school and then uh, then you went straight to uni yeah, or college? Straight to uni. Yeah, um, and I graduated like. A year and a half ago. Oh. And I was kind of juggling music and university at the same time. And in my finals for my last year at university, I was on tour, and we'd play a show, and I'd like go home and do my assignments till 4 oh a.m. And then, yeah, it was like pretty rough. But when I graduated uni, it was kind of like at the right time that I could kind of do music full time. So mm -hmm. it actually worked out really well. Was it your parents that kind of made you get a degree, or did you actually want one? Um, I think my parents were like. But like we support the music thing, but I think it'd be a good idea to get a degree. I was like, you know, like just for security. Yeah, and but you agreed. I feel like at the first years, I know that like just agreed with their friends. Like, yeah, I'll just get a degree. Yeah, also. but like, I think I, I find marketing interesting. Oh. I don't know if I'd ever want to do marketing as a job, yeah. but it's like an interesting yeah um, concept and weird way to like. Yeah, I studied it too. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it feels like. There's something interesting about all like the advertising aspect. Yeah. I actually studied that. I was in a studying abroad in Australia and was studying oh, really? marketing. Yeah, um, in what Sydney. City? In Sydney, oh, University cool. of Sydney. <laughs> yeah. You didn't think to study music? No, I didn't want to. I just I didn't feel like I would enjoy enjoy it cuz I just kind of like figuring things out for myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I did. The, the big university course in Brisbane is like, it's a lot about being in bands. Oh, they like, yeah. you, you like, for years you like, pop in different bands with different other like students. And then like, you form bands and then write like a song and then that's your, like your assignment. And I kind of, um, was just happy to do stuff solo. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I thought about it, but I, I was kind of like, oh, if I'm going to go to university, I may as well do it for like a backup plan yeah. kind of thing instead of wedging myself further into a music. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you first started out, you already like immediately send your songs to Triple J. Like, was it within the two weeks that you started sending out songs, or what was it? <laughs> These songs. Yeah, I, there's a um, website called Triple J Unearthed. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's a great like, website. Um, yeah. They're very supportive, and they were running like a high school competition, and I didn't make the finals so win or anything, but I put my song up, and it got played. Um, within two weeks of being put up because they were kind of like showcasing some of the entries on Triple J. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was pretty like exciting, especially being 15 and getting played yeah. that soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think it like boosted your confidence up that you're like, oh, now I can actually make it my career? Uh, or was it still like... I don't know if like, I was thinking about career, but I was thinking, yeah. I was definitely like, oh, it's, it's like, 
definitely a good feeling to make something and then for people to enjoy it. Looking back, do you think like going to college kind of like slowed down your career in a way that you couldn't like focus all on music? No, I think it was a good thing. I think it, I think it was good for my work ethic because mm -hmm. for so long I had to like juggle doing assignments and making music and playing shows and that was really hard. And then the second that I finished university and I had all this time on my hands, I was kind of like... What do you do? <laughs> well, I was like, I felt really good about it. Oh. I, was like, I was like, oh, cool, like I've worked really hard to juggle the two and now I have all this time. I'm just going to keep keep up the momentum, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if I had have left high school and just gone straight into music... <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I would have... Uh, like put as much effort in as I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did how else did you get your music out there early on other than the Triple J? Like how did people like, find you? Yeah, SoundCloud was really big when I first started. I'd say mm -hmm. it's not that big anymore, but um, SoundCloud was a really good one. And I think like in terms of shows, just like taking like opening slots for like other people playing in Brisbane and Did you already have a manager who was like helping you or were you like what the one booking yourself? Uh, yeah, I was like, I guess I was booking myself for a bit. I got my manager when I was um, 18, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what made like you, a, yeah, sorry, you said? Oh, this is like a few years where I was just doing stuff mm -hmm. by myself. And I had some people looking out for me though, which was nice. What made you want to get a manager if you could do everything yourself? I think I didn't really know what I was doing. Mm. And it's nice to have someone that's a part of the decision making and to promote you and I don't know I feel like I think it's a bit weird to like self promote <laughs> it's like it's like it feels a bit icky so it's nice to like have someone to do it for you so, mm -hmm. you, so you can just focus on making music and then was it your manager that helped you reach out like more internationally like working with Duckworth and everything yeah I we, we definitely um focused on America a lot mm -hmm. Duckworth was just something that um I organized myself. Oh wow. But um He's awesome. <laughs> I yeah. interviewed him also. <laughs> yeah, he's so so very talented. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, like yeah, um I, we've, we kind of like I guess like you focus on Australia and then you like it's it's kind of like a cool thing to like think bigger picture and think America, which mm -hmm. I guess is what we're doing now, like touring here and Do you think you kinda hit the ceiling in Australia? No, nah, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Um but I think America is just like a much bigger market. Yeah. I'd say Australia is almost like oversaturated because there's so much good music and there's not that many people. Yeah. But I think... Because you're already performing at like most of the big festivals there, so it's like, right? Uh, some of them. Yeah. Not a, yeah not a, I guess that's why there's like, there's not a ceiling yet. There's still yeah. room to grow. But, um, yeah, definitely like America feels like it's like there's a lot more opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Um, what would you say are your main inspirations for your music videos? I feel like early on you already had this specific style with like the little mic thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think Brockhampton was a really big influence on me when mm -hmm. I kind of found like the Saturation albums and got to follow along with them putting out like just their little DIY music videos. I really liked that stuff. Um, it feels really like honest. Yeah. And really fun as well. And can, and can you tell the story about when you <laughs> went to Tokyo? <laughs> yeah. And also you had to get a bit drunk, right? Because you're like... Yeah, a little bit. This. Yeah, I, we, um, we did a video for the song Dizzy. And I, one of my best friends, Matt, is a um, filmmaker. And I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool just to do like a few little videos in Tokyo. Like if I bought you a ticket, like would you want to just come for like two weeks? And we'll have like a little holiday as well. So we went. And we had an idea of me singing in a karaoke bar. Mm -hmm. but just with my own microphone but on the night we couldn't find like a karaoke bar that would like let us or was the right fit and so um, yeah I just had a couple of drinks and just like sang on the street <laughs> I, I think it's a bit so of, like, cool because you can boost. see it yeah, yeah like uh, yeah. Japan in the back <laughs> yeah I don't know we were like really we are trying real careful to toe the line of being like respectful though yeah. like, we don't want to be like in people's faces mm -hmm. or, like I think that's a bit um yeah, it's not a good thing. But yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. But yeah, we also want to have a bit of... And when did you get into Murakami? I don't know. I think <laughs> there's this funny thing going on of like people thinking I'm like the biggest Murakami fan. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy his books. Um, 
but I haven't read like every book of his. Mm. Um, but like my friend Connor Akure, he kind of got me into him. And, oh, okay. Yeah, I think I just like I, he's like a Japanese author, and I was reading it while I was in Japan, and that made it like a really cool experience. Like in his books, he talks a lot about trains and cats. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like two recurring uh, themes. And so, like, reading it on the bullet train and, like, being oh, in the... Yeah, like, that just cool. made it really cool yeah. to read in that situation. <laughs> yeah. And also, you're into... Is it film photography yeah. and Photoshop? Yeah. When did you get into it? Maybe three years ago. Um, one of my close friends is a guy called Sean Pike, and he does a lot of my photography. Mm-hmm. And he shoots just on film. And um, just started to hang out with him just to take photos for Golden Vessel. But then I just kind of started shooting as well and really fell in love with it I think I definitely want to take it a bit like try and like do photography work and take it a bit more seriously maybe next year like do it for other people or more yeah of I just it's so much I just really enjoy shooting and it'd be cool to put together like um creative works with photography or do a book or like an oh, exhibition oh that'd be so cool yeah I'm really yeah. interested in that type of stuff um so I'm just starting to think about what that would look like maybe mm-hmm. for next year yeah but, oh yeah, it's, nice. it's like a nice outlet that isn't music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's the main inspiration behind Slow Shine? Um, I don't know. I think it's like, uh, the, I guess the, the main thing that I wanted to do with Slow Shine was just have a platform for my friends and I to make fun music with. So all the songs have like so many friends contributing and... Um, I think yeah that's I just wanted because I just really enjoy collaborating with people and so I think that's I was just like cool I just want to make an album with like lots of people and have a lot of fun with it and so I guess that was like the main inspiration my friends and actually was it difficult going from like you just making music by yourself to like working in studios with so many people or did it come naturally to you um I think I've always been collaborating but I just have more of an opportunity to do it now Mm -hmm. but yeah none of it was really like studios or it would just be like a friend coming over and we'd just record some stuff and then I'd try and fit it into like a song or yeah it was always like pretty Mm low-key I think being in a big studio with lots of people kind of is a bit I can it can work really well but it also can feel a bit like not that natural Mm -hmm. yeah and how would you say the Australia music scene has changed compared to when you were like 15 working on music um I think I'm no, uh, maybe not so much in the last six years, but like definitely in the last 10 or 15, mm-hmm. it feels like there's been a lot more crossover between genres in terms of people just being friends as well. Like there'll be like people in like a rock band who are friends with like a producer who are friends with a rapper and everyone just kind of hangs out and supports each other. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just didn't know if that existed because I was like well, in the music <laughs> industry, but like I've definitely seen that like kind of strengthen more and more, just like cross, um, like friendships from genres and mm-hmm. worlds, which is like a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. yeah. How do you, how do you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you've made? I definitely uh, value the value songwriting more. Mm. When it, like when I was first starting, I was like, oh, I just want to do cool sounds, and like if someone sang on a song, I wouldn't really care what they sang about because I was just like, oh, like it's the sound of the vocal, not what they're singing about. But I feel like that's what a lot of EDM producers get trapped into. Yeah. <laughs> so all the vocals sound so similar. It's, yeah. The lyrics are all just the same thing. Hmm. And I think just recently, maybe in the last two years, I kind of was like, oh, actually songwriting is the maybe more of like a art form than just like making cool sounds. Yeah. Like, um, it's kind of easy to make cool sounds, but it's like quite a skill to succinctly say something in a song and make it really catchy, but also like moving and um so I think like when Blonde by Frank Ocean came out I listened to that album like twice a day for like a year like it really just changed my opinion and so I think with like um new Golden Vessel stuff I've kind of just been like oh songwriting is almost like the primary focus now and then the cool sounds kind of come around it so Mm -hmm. I guess that's like been a switch yeah how do you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger oh so many ways I think um, I think like a big part of it is just being really realistic about like what music is and doing it as a job and um, how people connect with it and I think also yeah just like 
enjoying the moments as well. Mm -hmm. Like, um, just like playing shows and meeting people after the shows. I've just like recently, re like, well, not recently, but like realized that's like a really cool yeah. like, thing to be like a part of. Mm -hmm. And just really, like, I think my favorite thing is to make music with friends. So just like not letting that, like, like just really savoring that. Yeah, I think just like appreciating things more is probably what I've. Yeah. Learned. Yeah. What would you say have been the biggest challenges in your life so far? I think just growing up and like figuring out what is important to me mm -hmm. and like like values and being surrounded by really good people. It's not been a challenge, but it's just been like made the challenges easier, I guess. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 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 I think it's like it's who you surround yourself with, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I heard this like stat as like if your five closest friends put on five or like 10 pounds, you'll probably put 10 pounds on as well. Oh yeah. Or if they lose 10 pounds, you'll probably yeah. also lose 10 pounds. So I think like, not that that's challenges, but it's like, I think just realizing that the people around you are really important mm -hmm. and they help. I really like that. Yeah. 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 What does love mean to you? Yeah, that's another big question. Here. <laughs> um, what does it mean? Being really genuine and honest and I think it's a lot about giving and not taking mm -hmm. being like sacrificial yeah I think it's more I think for me in my head it's more of like a caring thing than like a like a big like emotional feeling last question what do you want to be remembered for I'd like to be remembered for like small interactions rather than like putting out like the most prolific album it'd just be cool to be known as someone that like was down to earth or nice to be around or I don't like I think mm -hmm. that stuff's like has like a longer lasting impact than like being cool or yeah yeah I yeah. agree but maybe yeah. maybe uh, maybe I won't get remembered for that maybe I'm <laughs> an awful human being <laughs> nah, I hope not. but yeah I think yeah, yeah. That's, that's more important mm -hmm. yeah I love this thank you so much thank you nice to talk to you <laughs> bye see you later